In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for the Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. Our Chaplain's Report today comes from the book of Daniel. And to get you kind of caught up, if you haven't been following our series on the book of Daniel, King Darius has, off, has issued a decree, which according to the law of the Medes and the Persians, cannot be revoked, not even by him. Not even he can say, whoops, messed up there, got to take that decree back. Nope. Law of the Medes and the Persians suggests that once the king has signed it, that is law and not even he can change it. So he issued this decree at the behest of his advisors, who really hate Daniel, to make any kind of praying or any kind of petition to any god other than King Darius, that that person is going to be thrown into the lion's den. And because he allowed his own pride to get the better of him, he kind of signed it without really thinking about the implications of it. And as we're about to see here, he knew that Daniel was somebody that prayed every day, but he was so ready to accept the terms, he was so ready to do this to boost his own ego, that he didn't think about the consequences. And because of that, he was tricked into this. And Daniel did exactly what he's always done. He kept the windows open in his house like he always did, and he prayed three times a day. And the advisors, knowing that this took place, went over to his house, saw him, went to the king, said, King, he's violating your law, and you've already written it into law that whoever does has to be thrown into the lion's den. What's interesting to me, though, and I think that this really does show some, some backstory, some character development that we didn't see from the very early part of this story. King Darius is really distraught. I mean, he's not just a little upset. And this is not somebody that is just really concerned for a coworker. It's very abundantly clear by looking at his reaction in the scripture that King Darius is somebody that really cared about Daniel. Daniel was somebody that was important to him. And yet, Daniel's life is now put into peril because of an action King Darius took. And we're going to kind of see a little bit of that reaction and what happens to Daniel in this next verse. If you'll look at Daniel chapter 6, verses 16 through 18 where he writes, Then the king gave orders, and Daniel was brought in and cast into the lion's den. The king spoke and said to Daniel, Your God, whom you constantly serve, will himself deliver you. A stone was brought and laid over the mouth of the den, and the king sealed it with his own signet ring and with the signet rings of his nobles, so that nothing would be cha changed in regard to Daniel. Then the king went off to his palace and spent the night fasting, and no entertainment was brought before him, and sleep fled from him. Looking at this story, because we often look at it from Daniel's perspective, and we ought to, he is the main character. But for a moment, look at it from the king's perspective. Can you imagine living with the guilt, living with the situation, knowing that your actions, a decision that you did, and in the king's place, he was the only one that had the power to do this. He was the only human in the world that could have pulled this off, and he's the one that did it. That your actions put a dear friend's life in danger. That because of your own pride, because of your own conceit, because of your own desire to lift yourself up, out of that was born an action, and you should have known better, that caused your friend's life to be in peril, that you might lose someone you love, lose someone that you care about because of your own pride. Once you think about it that way, it's not real hard to understand why King Darius was so upset. It's not real hard to see yourself in King Darius. And so, while I think that it's always appropriate for us to look through the book of Daniel from the perspective of him, I think it's also really healthy for us to look through the lens of King Darius and to remember that we need to keep our pride in check because otherwise 
we could really hurt people. And this was an example of that where King Darius really hurt Daniel, even though he didn't want to and didn't mean to. It was never his intention signing that law that Daniel would be on the receiving end of that law's wrath. And yet he didn't think it all the way through and his actions were done carelessly. So knowing that, you can kind of see why King Darius is so distraught, why he fasts and can't sleep, and the reason that he devotes himself all night to worrying about Daniel and what's going to happen to him because he knows that he's the reason that Daniel's in the position that he is now. And yet, I think that it's significant that even King Darius has faith in God. Look at that quote from the first verse that we read in verse 16. Your God, this is King Darius speaking, your God, whom you constantly serve, will himself deliver you. Hmm. So King Darius, he knows the kind of person Daniel is. He knew that this was a guy that prayed three times a day. He knew that this was a man that was devoted to God's cause in every aspect of his life. Look at the way that he worded that. He says, your God whom you constantly serve. This guy knows Daniel is real serious about God. That he takes it very seriously and it is an integral part of who he is. That he is, he never constantly, he never stops ceasing. He never stops serving God. That that is the focus of his life. And because of that, Daniel's faith is so strong and so pure that it inspires faith in King Darius, a pagan. That King Darius sees his commitment and says, well, surely the God that Daniel serve is going to protect him. He is going to deliver, to deliver him from this situation. So he not only had faith that God had the ability to save him from the lion's den, he also had faith that God was going to that he not only could do it, he was willing to do it. So we see a very strong faith, faith stronger probably than most of the Israelites that we've seen in the biblical narrative up until this point in a pagan because of how strong Daniel's faith is. Now, the faith of others can't save you, and the faith of others is not going to be something that necessarily brings you into a right relationship with God, but it's a good starting point. And that's what we see right here with Daniel in a faith that we should try to emulate. We saw how strong Daniel's faith was in verse 10, where despite knowing that his life was going to be forfeit, if he continued to pray to God, he did it anyway, did it exactly the way that he had done before. And like I said yesterday, that is the kind of faith that inspires people. That is the kind of faith that a leader is supposed to have so that others can emulate that faith. And we see the fruits of it right here. Even a pagan like King Darius sees the faith of Daniel and says, if he's serving God like that, his God has the power to do anything. If this is somebody that devotes himself to serving God the way that he does, surely his God is going to protect him. Darius had a pretty strong faith in God, even though he didn't really understand it. Daniel's faith was the reason that Darius had reason to believe himself. And I imagine that, especially after this episode, that Darius had a better relationship with God because of Daniel and because of the way he conducted himself. Even Darius, at this point, has a lot of confidence in God's divine providence. But you'll notice, too, that the king got exactly what he wanted. The king wanted a decree to where nobody else was going to declare any kind of petition to anybody other than him, again, to puff up his own pride, and he got exactly what he wanted, and he realized it wasn't really what he wanted. That's why it's so we need to be so careful about what we want, because sometimes we'll get it, and we'll realize that really wasn't the thing that we wanted. Luckily, Darius had enough faith in Daniel's God to, to try to overcome that. <clears throat> and I think that it's important for us to note this as well. Daniel was a servant of God. He was somebody that chose to walk with God and chose to follow him. Every Christian worth his salt eventually goes through the lion's den. 
It just happens. It might be a divorce. It might be the death of a loved one. It might be the death of a child. It could be some kind of natural disaster. It could be some kind of great trial, something that's very difficult to overcome. In my case, it was cancer. And there may be other great trials out there. I don't know. I don't know what God has in store for me. But the point is, everybody has a lion's den. And you've got a couple of choices. You can either trust God to bring you through it. You can believe that God is going to be the thing that delivers you. Or you can try to figure it out on your own. And I do not recommend the second option. You see, when I was going through my lion's den, the only thing that got me through it is being surrounded by people of strong faith. And the faith that I had myself. It was the only thing that gave me the strength to continue to carry on. And people that have been through the lion's den, they know what I'm talking about. Because Daniel was in a situation that he should not have survived. Daniel was in a situation that no matter how hard he tried or what he did, he was not going to succeed without God's help. And a lot of us were put in those situations. I was. I was put in a situation, and I'm so I'm sure that a lot of you out there have as well. You get put into a situation that there is absolutely no logical explanation whatsoever for how you got out of that situation unless God's hand was there guiding you. That's where Daniel is right now. And being in that position, falling into the hands of a loving God, is the best position you can be in. Because once you've emerged from it, it makes you aware of how dependent you are on God, how much you need Him. And it does strengthen your faith in what, who He is and what He can do. You see, when you go through that lion's den, that's where you find out how strong your faith really is. And sometimes you find out it's pretty strong. Sometimes, if you're like me, you find out it wasn't nearly as strong as you thought it was. But that's the point where you fall on God and trust that He's going to bring you through it. You see, when we do enter that lion's den, we essentially have two options. Are we going to trust God? Are we going to believe that he can rescue us? Or are we going to rely on our own understanding and try to solve the problem ourselves? I'm not saying you don't work towards the resolution of the problem. I'm not saying you don't fight to get through it. I'm just saying that there is a difference in the emphasis and the mindset that you have as to whether or not okay, I'm going to solve this problem on my own, or I'm going to trust that God is going to be the thing that gets me through it. And in this situation, we see both Darius and Daniel trusting that God is going to be the one that delivers. Daniel's faith inspired faith in his friend. And that's the kind of faith that all of us need to have. And that's the kind of faith that usually only comes after going through a lion's den. Stay the course, friends. Hey, to make sure you get all the updates, you need to go ahead and subscribe and click that little notification bell down there. That gets you a notification every time I post a new Bible lesson or political commentary. Now, I'm not saying that if you don't subscribe, it's because you hate America and Jesus. But I can't think of any other reason you wouldn't subscribe.